go ahead. Make my day. That's right, we're at the 430 hire installment. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's doing well out there. And that's right, we're on the fourth installment of Dirty Harry franchise, and that installment is Sudden Impact. This film came out December 9th of 1983. It's rated R like the rest of the films. Had a budget of $22 million. So up until this was the highest budget of Dirty Harry film up to this point. And upon release, it's also the highest grossing film out of the whole series. It made 67 in America and 150 worldwide. So it's a huge hit. Plus, it's the only film Clint Eastwood directed. Now after the Enforcer, as I said in the review last week for the Enforcer, that Clint Eastwood really thought that was the last Dirty Harry film. He went on to direct other projects, starred in other films. In the early 80s, Warner Brothers did a survey with fans of their films and asked them what is a movie, what are some movies they'd like to see the studio make? Dirty Harry trended at number one. They wanted to see another sequel to the Dirty Harry franchise. So this this film this series was still very much in the fans' minds they wanted to see another sequel so they they told Clint Eastwood about their findings and Clint Eastwood just said let's do another one so he signed on he got to direct this film he also stars as Dirty Harry Callahan Sandra Locke plays Jennifer Spencer and her and Clint Eastwood were a couple at this time they did a bunch of films together The Gauntlet which is a really cool film I'll, I'll uh, review that soon um, Every Which Way But Loose this one I, I th I'm pretty sure they did another one as well the great character actor Pat Hingle Sadly, the man has passed away, but he plays Chief Jannings in this film, and this is the third time he worked with Clint Eastwood. He was in Hang Em High, The Gauntlet, and this. And I'd be remiss if I don't mention Albert Potwell for his fourth and final appearance in the Dirty Harry franchise, and he plays Horace, and he's a fellow police officer and Dirty Harry's friend in this film. And just like the other Dirty Harry films, we start the film with a crime. We see a man and a woman in a parked car along the ledge along the ocean off this dirt road, and they're making out. We don't see their faces. And they're getting hot and heavy. And before they really get into having sex, the woman pulls out a 38 revolver, shoots the guy in the crotch and in the head. We don't see it, but later on, this is her M.O. as we go along. We're going to reintroduce the Har Dirty Harry. And he's still having problems with his superiors giving him shit about his tactics and the way he goes does, does police work. But he gets results. So they don't suspend him or fire him because he does the job and gets it done it's just he does it old school like he is going to find get away get justice one way or another and during the beginning of the film we get to see D dirty harry gets to give his famous line go ahead make my day as he foils his coffee shop robbery which was a famous quote i think it was in the top 50 most famous quotes of movie quotes of all time ronald reagan quoted it in a speech in the 80s i mean it was very much in the pop culture of the era and then we're introduced to Jennifer Spencer as the film goes on. She's an artist, and we see her in San Francisco, but she's going up to San Pablo, which Carmel, California, subbed for San Pablo, and that was Clint Eastwood's hometown. I don't know if he still lives there full-time, but that's where he lived in the 80s, and he was mayor for a little bit, too. And she's going up there, and we find out she was originally from there, her and her sister, and she's going to restore their, um, they have a wooden, car wooden horse carousel, and she's re going to repaint it for them. And we find out she's the one to kill the guy in the beginning because she goes up to San Pablo and she walks out on the beach and she sees this little boardwalk with this building on top. And we see this flashback of her and her sister going with these people to this little party under this boardwalk and these guys and this woman gang rape them. It's a very uncomfortable but well done flashback. I mean, Clint Eastwood does it in a way where you don't see any nudity but it's still not a pleasant thing to sit through. It does what it's supposed to. It's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable and give you and make you feel sympathy for this woman of what she's went through. Now, her sister, she visits her sister briefly, and her sister dealt with this horror in a totally different way. She became comatose. She sits in a sanitarium, doesn't talk, pretty much stares out the window. And Jennifer went the other way. She became cold and retracted from society and very cold and calculating, and she's taking revenge back on these people. She wants revenge. She's become stronger from this, although she still thinks about the horrors of that night, but she just wants to make them pay because they never went to prison. They got off, and she just wants to see them pay the ultimate sacrifice, which is kill them, which we see. She, the one guy that was involved, now this is like 10 years later, is on this remote beach fishing, and she walks right out, and he's in broad daylight, 
And she goes to him, you don't remember me, do you? And he's like, she just pulls out her gun, shoots him in the crotch, shoots him in the head. And we see this repeated because she kills a couple more folks too, a couple more guys that were involved with this. And the one main scumbag that was there gets a call from the woman that was involved saying, I think the bitch is back, meaning Jennifer. And he makes a beeline back for San Pablo. But so Dirty Harry's in San Pablo too doing an investigation on the murder from San Francisco because the guy that was killed was from San Pablo. And Dirty Harry starts putting the pieces together that this is revenge plot. And him and Jennifer meet and they kind of become spitting on each other. They actually spend a night together and have sex. And to fast forward to some things, we find out the chief of police was involved with getting these assholes off because his son was there and participated begrudgingly. He didn't want to. The guy, the other people in the group kind of forced him to. And he actually got them off. That's why he never had any jail time because he didn't want his son going to prison. So he admits this to Jennifer, but then Jennifer gets taken hostage and the police chief gets killed by the main scumbag. And then Dirty Harry shows up with his 44 auto mag, which is introduced in this film, and which is a cool-ass gun. And he saves the day because he kills the rest of the bad guys. Now, and, at, and what could be controversial is this is the first Dirty Harry film where Dirty Harry does take out criminals, but the one that he was mainly investigating, he lets go. At the end of the film, he real him and Jennifer are standing there, and Jennifer's like, what, are you going to take me in now? And she goes, what are my rights? Me and my sister were victims of a horrible crime. We were beaten and brutalized and raped, and they walk free. They've been free this whole time to do whatever they want, but we've had to live with this. And, and Dirty Harry's just looking at her, and that one police officer comes over, and he goes, found this 38 in his waistband. Now, the main scumbag took this off of Jennifer. That was the gun she was using. And Dirty Harry looks at her, looks at the back of the police officer, he goes, I think you'll find out if you run ballistics, it's the same gun that was used in the other murders. And the police officer goes, so it's over then, Inspector? And Callahan looks at Jennifer, looks back at the police officer, he goes, yeah, it's over. And her, him and Jennifer walk away together, and that's the end of the film. So he actually lets her go, even though she, we're on her side. You feel sympathy for her for what they went through because it's awful. And it doesn't, like I said, when those scenes happen, they're not very comfortable to sit through. But Eastwood does a nice job of showing the horrors of it without showing the nudity of it or the, the you know, it could have been, you know, he he's restrained, but it's still dark enough and messed up enough that it makes you feel very uncomfortable, obviously. And at the end of the film, it's only a film. I don't condone revenge, but... I was on her side, and I was glad Clint, Dirty Harry let her off. Um, but he does, it's a dichotomy of those two things where Harry's supposed to take her in, but he just can't because she's right. They didn't get justice, and she thought this is the only way they can get justice, even though he knows it's wrong, and he saw an out for her, so he let her go. And it's a very interesting question, and he and Eastwood handles it perfectly. He walks the line. You don't have to agree with Harry at the end of the film, but you can see where he's coming from, and you can see where she's coming from. So it's a very interesting film for sure, and for a fourth film in a franchise, it's a very well done sequel. Although by this point, Clint Eastwood was he was he directed a lot of films up to this point, and then later on he went on the when Oscars for directing. So it's a very well directed film. It's a very dark film. It's a very gritty film. Um, it's it's the darkest of the first four films, uh, darkest of the series, in my opinion. But the only thing, I, this is a really good sequel. For a fourth film in a franchise, it's a very good sequel. The only thing that drops my rating down a little bit is the villains. Yes, they're awful human beings. They're complete scumbags and assholes for sure, and they deserve everything they get. They're just not as interesting as the villain, the Scorpio Killer, or the police officers in the second film. They're just not. They're just terrible scumbag piece of shit human beings that's what they are but they're not as interesting so that brings the rating down just a little bit so but i would give this film an 8.75 out of 10 it's a really well done sequel in a franchise that was supposed to be over in 76 and here they were in 83 making a new sequel and it's a really good film well acted well directed Clint Eastwood's awesome in the film. Sandra Locke's awesome in the film. All the actors do really good work. It's just the villains aren't as interesting. They're just regular scumbags that are pretty freaking evil at the end of the day. But yeah, 8.75 out of 10 for Sudden Impact. Have you ever seen this film? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. Like, we would appreciate that. 
I'll be back with Wrong Turn just dropped today on iTunes. I'm going to watch that and review that. I'll have that out later in the week. I'm going to review a little horror film from the 70s called The Car, which is a film I used to watch a lot as a kid. And then next week I'm going to do The Deadpool and The Perfect Weapon and another horror film. So until then, I hope you're all doing well out there, and I'm just going to leave you with bye.